What's up, YouTube? And what you know, my name is Domino with the Zero, and welcome to another Pokemon Sun and Moon uh, anime review as I turn Do Not Disturb on on my phone. Um, this is for episode number 44. Now this is the 30 or this is the third episode that we've reviewed, so um, we're still trying to figure things out. And I want to thank you for all that have checked this out so far. I hope you're enjoying it. Um, we're doing things a little differently today. Um, as I watched the episode, I wrote out everything that happened, but I don't want these reviews to just be like a play-by-play. -play. So um, bear with me. I don't know how this episode or how, how this review is going to go, but just bear with me. Just bear with me. Um, so this episode was really good. Um, this episode was about Ash finding Nebby and everybody, literally everybody, getting to meet Nebby. So uh, it starts off with Ash and Pikachu in a uh, in what we what we see is a, a dark, foggy location. It turns out to be the altar, um, the altar that we find Solgaleo, Lunala, and soon to be Necrozma in our games. Now, if you haven't played the games, this episode is going to set up a mindset that's like totally wrong, which I think is super cool. We'll talk about that more. Uh, but Ash doesn't know how he's there. Pikachu is just kind of standing, pika pika ing, and all of a sudden, two wormholes open and Solgaleo and Lunala pop out and they come down and kind of look at Ash. And um, Ash makes a promise to them and they go to disappear. And we see Nebby kind of floating down. Uh, and then the, the intro starts. Now, after the intro is done, we see, like, at the very end of the intro, we see Ash sitting with, uh, with Nebby there. We see all of his Pokemon, we see Pikachu, we see Nebby. <clears throat> so, Nebby's about to become super, super important. Nebby being Cosmog, of course. Um, so, and then also at the end of the intro, we see Ash's black, the new Z-Ring, which is going to be a black Z-Ring. Um, just kind of chilling there. Uh, hold on. What? Hey, what? Anyway, uh, we see a black Z-Ring. So that didn't play any part in this episode, but that will be something coming soon, which is going to be really cool. We'll see what that's all about. Uh, but as Nebi is born, we see all of the Tapu Ko or all of the Tapus around the region react. And through the Sun and Moon games, there's really no reason to think that that would happen. So I'm really wondering how different Ultra Sun and Moon are going to be. And this this episode kind of kind of set it up to be extremely different. Um, also, we see we briefly see Gladian in a cave with his Pokemon, and he he, he says uh, because Type Null is acting up, he says like, "Was that an Ultra Beast?" So how does he know about Ultra Beasts? I don't think he knew about them in the original Sun and Moon. I mean, we didn't do anything with Ultra Beasts in the original Sun and Moon. This kind of makes you wonder what those original games were for. But um, in the beginning of the episode, Rotom uh, has has trouble waking up uh, Ash and Pikachu, eventually getting um, uh, Litten to wake him up with it with the tail. Uh, so th they get up, and um, Ash recounts his dream that he's had. And that's when we, I guess that's when we fully realized that he was having a dream. Um, if we couldn't tell, which, you know, why would he be at the altar? But we do get confirmation that he was in a dream. Um, on TV, we're seeing Lady Burnett, or Professor Burnett, who was, I think it was called Lady Burnett, but was given the Lady Award for all of this stuff. And Kukui only acknowledges her as a fellow professor. Aren't they supposed to be married? Why would they not? I don't know why they don't just say that. And we didn't really find out anything else, but um, apparently we know that she's doing research at Aether and she's re researching the Ultra Wormholes. We hear more about that a lot in this episode. Um, but Burnett and Lusamine are then actually shown at the altar uh, researching what we realize is an Ultra Aura. We hear that phrase a whole lot in this episode. Uh, but we also hear this story about how the Tapus and the uh, the UBs, the Ultra Beasts, apparently like had a big fight. I don't remember that. Is that something that happened? I, I like I don't remember that in the original games. We don't know anything about this. Like all of the stuff that's shown in this episode just makes me think that we don't know anything about Sun and Moon. Like the original Sun and Moon games are like prototypes for Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. I don't know, but anyway. 
Uh, Lusamine's hair is absolutely wild. It literally goes down to her feet in that very interesting little, um, uh, what would you even call it? Layout, design, whatever you call it. Uh, style, there we go, that's the word. Um, but Lusamine is a very animated figure, like much more so than in the, than in the games that we saw. And we're gonna see that here soon. Um, as Ash is heading to um, as Ash is heading to school for the day, uh, Tapu Koko flies past Pikachu and gets their attention and leads them to where Nebi is. And this is where they meet Nebi, uh, and Nebi is sleeping. And we find out that Rotom has no data about this, so it's really cool. Uh, Ash obviously picks up Nebi and goes running to the school. Um, at the school, you know, Ash is late and all this other stuff, but he runs in. Uh, to Kukui and he's like hey we found a Pokemon that Rotom has no information about and then uh, Kukui asks to see the Pokemon and Ash's, Ash flips around out of the bag and both Rowlet and Nebby are asleep in Ash's bag and it's really it's a really funny cute little scene uh, but Nebby floats out of the bag still asleep and the gang takes a turn every single person including Samson Oak is there uh, takes a turn trying to wake up Nebby none of it works um, Lily then suggests that we they should name it Nebby because of the whole stars and the nebulous and I think we go through this explanation in Sun and Moon but Ash agrees um, Lily walks up and calls uh, Nebby by its name its new name and that causes Nebby to wake up in a scream I mean an absolute screech like uh, Rotom says that it's using Supersonic and it doesn't like the name or whatever. I'm just trying to get caught up on the uh, the thumbnail so I can make sure I'm keeping up. So anyway, Nebby wakes up and <clears throat> Ash passes Nebby to Kiawe and eventually on to Mallow who is successful in getting Nebby to calm down. I don't know why. It seemed very, very random. Uh, where am I? So, Steeny then pops up and uses Sweet Scent which Rowlet's attracted to Steeny. Steenie knocks Rowlet away. I wonder if, like, eventually that's going to be a, uh, what would it be? Serena and Decidueye. I wonder if they're going to wind up having, like, a little thing. Uh, kind of, this kind of suggests it almost. Um, but that does wind up calming Nebby, and it's a very funny little scene. Now they try to feed Nebby, and nobody's food except for Sophocles' little sugar stars appears, uh, appeals to Nebby. And of course, because they're stars. So Nebby winds up beating those, and after school, they all go stock up on them so Ash can feed Nebby. Now, when they arrive back, um, Lily and Ash are riding in, I guess, Lily's limo, taking Ash back to Kukui's. And when they get there, they see that the helicopter. Uh, wait, did I skip over something? I totally skipped over a very small thing. Um, we see at the actual Aether Paradise. Uh, where we then see Lusamine and Burnett and Wick is there. And so is this, uh, the professor. You would recognize him if you saw him, if you played the games, but it's uh, Salbo is his name. Uh, all four of them take off towards Mele, Mele, Mele Island uh, because they're, they found signs of this ultra aura that they're looking for. So they're at Kukui's house. Okay, so they get there. Uh, let me slow down a little bit. Okay, so they get there. And uh, Kukui says to Ash, like, we have some visitors and they want to see you, Nebby, and Lily. Okay, so we know what to expect, right? If we've played the games, we know what's going to happen. But when Lily and Lusamine meet, they immediately talk about how their mother, daughter, and Lusamine is, like, hugging on Lily. And Lily just does not like her mother at all. Uh, eventually calling her out for treating her like a child and pushing Lusamine's thoughts onto Lily. Even evolving Lily's Clefairy while while Lily was gone. Clefairy, Lily didn't want an, a stupid Clefable. And who would want a stupid Clefable? You have Clefa, you have Clefairy, perfectly fine. Why would you want a stupid Clefable? So actually that makes me not like Lusamine very much, just, to, just from the get-go. Um, but as I was talking about, Lusamine is very animated. And Lily is just as animated, which is kind of weird. Lily's been very reserved so far. And Ash and Kukui and Rotom kind of point out how animated both of them are and how alike they look. Um, but Kukui goes to introduce everybody and again introduces Burnett as a professor, as a, a fellow professor, and uh, talks about how like 
they're involved in research at Aether. So Aether is apparently like a an organization that everybody knows about and everybody's fine. And of course, like I said, Wick and Salvo are there as well. Now it gets into the super interesting part. How far into this are we? Oh, we're about 10 minutes in. I, I definitely thought that it wasn't recording. Anyway, um, so this is where things get a little weird. Lusamine asks, you know, let's not let's not waste any time. Let me see Nevi. And immediately says, this is an Ultra Beast. Or maybe it was Burnett. It was very unclear who was speaking. Um, but someone straight up calls him an Ultra Beast. And um, what's her name? Burnett is seen sitting at the computer and pulls up the altar. And uh, wait, 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 wait. I skipped something. The gang starts to talk about the deities in the Ultra Beast. That's why while, while Burnett's sitting at the computer, kind of pulls up some images, um, which I guess, I guess it would suggest something if Burnett just sat down at this computer in Kukui's lab and just pulled up this information. So maybe that does suggest that they're together, but they never say it. Anyway, um, Lily points out that she had read about um, this, the, the, the battle between the deities and the Ultra Beast. I didn't read no book in Sun and Moon about that. But anyway, uh, Lusamine hugs her and so proud of her and it's another animated little scene. Um, in these images, the known Ultra Beasts are seen like before Ultra Sun and Moon, but the three new ones that we've seen haven't been shown. So I'm interested, like, are those actually, you know what, I just pieced it together. So the Ultra Recon team that we saw is going to pull. Moving on. Um, the music in this episode, especially from this point on, is absolutely amazing. But at this point, it was very evil. So I mentioned that if you hadn't played the original Sun and Moon games, that you wouldn't. This episode does not set you up for with the right mind of who these characters are. Because Lusamine is good. Like, if you look at her, you have absolutely no idea that she's... Well, anyway. But Salbo, on the other hand, the professor with the little green bug eyes... This guy is evil, and every time he talks, his music's playing, and he's really pushy. Um, but this is where Ash talks about the dream that he had the night before, talking about how he met Solgaleo, and he met Lunala, and everybody starts freaking out. Why did these two show themselves to Ash? Um, but Lusamine then asks Ash to leave Nebi um, with Aether so that they can take care of him. Ash says, no, I promised Solgaleo, I promised Lunala that I would look after Nebi. And this is where Salvo like pushes onto Ash and said, excuse me, this Ultra Beast would be too much for you to handle. And Lusamine says, Salvo, that's enough, and calls him off. That's not what I remember. Um, uh, where am I, where am I, where am I? Lusamine then goes on to say, hey, we trust you. You're going to take care of Nebi. If you have trouble, call me. And of course, Salbo is like, no, that's that stupid, blah, blah, blah. Salbo seems to be like the real bad guy, but I know better than that. Do you know better than that? Um, so, Ash, uh, uh, Nebi falls asleep while Ash is holding him, and uh, Rotom, Rotom flashing back to the beginning of the episode where he couldn't wake up, Ash and Pikachu goes, ah, oh, we've got another sleepyhead in our, in our house. Um, through the closing scene, Kukui and Burnett share a smile, which again suggests stuff. And like I said, Salbo really seems like the bad guy. The faces, the things he's saying, and the fact that Lusamine seems like a normal person. Now, during the episode, Lusamine totally says that she would like to have would like to meet an Ultra Beast one day, uh, including something like, well, I don't want to spoil stuff, but. That's it for the episode. Again, it was super good. Now, in the preview for next week. Team Rocket is back, and Team Rocket seems to be eyeing Nebby. Nebby is teleporting people away, touches Lily, Lily freaks out, and then teleports Ash through a wormhole. And all we see at the end of the preview is Ash growing through this wormhole. Where is that going to land? I have no idea. But it looks like the Sun and Moon anime story is picking up. If you're not watching, I would highly suggest, again, this was episode 44. And I know that we kind of talk a lot. Pretty much in this time that we spend talking, you could have almost watched the entire episode. But if you did watch this far, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. Let me know what your favorite part of this episode was in the comments below. And we'll see you next week for the next Pokemon Sun and Moon anime review. Until then, have a blessed day.